Welcome back to another video. With the current global situation, a lot of people are turning to biking to get outside, stay fit, and have fun with their families. With many new consumers getting into mountain biking, I wanted to share 5 trail-worthy bikes that you can buy with your $1200 stimulus check. While there are many great options for under $1200, I found that these five bikes offer the most bang for your buck. All five bikes on this list come with boost spacing through axles, one by drivetrains, hydraulic disc brakes, and air sprung forks. These bikes will keep any rider stoked, so in no particular order, let's jump right into the first pick. The Nuke Proof Scout Race. Coming in at $1,100, you can get this bike in either 29 inch or 27.5 inch wheels. It features an aluminum frame with boost through axles all around, an air sprung RockShox Recon RL with 140 millimeters of travel on the 27.5 and 130 millimeters of travel on the 29 inch version. It has a 1x10 Shimano Dior drivetrain, Shimano hydraulic disc brakes, and it's all rolling on Maxxis Minion tires. It also comes with tubeless ready wheels. Bonus features are internal cable routing for a dropper post should you add one later on, and a threaded bottom bracket for easy maintenance. Both the 27.5 and the 29 inch version have a 65 degree head tube angle, and that head tube angle is the slackest on this list. I really see nothing wrong with this bike. Next up is the Ragley Marley 2.0 and the Ragley Big Owl. These bikes are nearly identical in spec to the Nuke Proof Scout, but they're both $100 cheaper than the Scout at $1,000. The Marley is the 27.5 inch version, and the Big Owl is the 29 inch version. They both have a RockShox Recon fork, but it's opposite of the Nuke Proof Scout. The 27.5 inch version has 130 millimeters of travel, while the 29 inch version has 140 millimeters of travel. The drivetrain, brakes, and tires are all the same on these bikes as it is the Nuke Proof. It also has internal cable routing for a dropper post and tubeless ready wheels. With very similar geometry figures as the Nuke Proof, the determining factor really comes down to color choice and if you prefer Nuke Proof or Ragley parts on your bike. Somewhat interesting fact when comparing the geometry numbers, the 29 inch version is actually half a degree slacker at 65 degrees and then the 27.5 inch version is at 65.5 degrees. Usually it's the reverse, uh, the 27.5 would be the slacker option. So between the Nuke Proof and the Ragley, if you want a longer travel slacker 29 inch, you go with the Ragley. If you want a slacker 27.5, you go with the Nuke Proof. And then vice versa, if you want a steeper head angle 29 inch, go with the Nuke Proof. You want a steeper head angle 27.5, go with the Ragley Marley. This is another bike that I really can't see anything wrong with it, especially being $100 cheaper than the Nuke Proof. It offers a lot of value for $1,000. And now my third pick for this list, the Da Vinci Cobain Hardtail 27.5 Plus. Another somewhat similar option to the previous two bikes, but this one does not offer a 29 inch version. While the frame can fit 29 inch wheels, you cannot spec it that way from the manufacturer. This bike comes in at $1,150 and it has a 130 millimeter fork, which you guessed it, is a RockShox Recon. It also has the Shimano Dior 10 speed drivetrain, but it has a smaller ranged cassette than the previous two options. The Cobain comes with an 11 to 42 tooth cassette, while the Nuke Proof and Ragley come with an 11 to 46 tooth cassette. Not a huge difference, but those numbers really matter when you're going up a steep climb. If you're unfamiliar with cassette ratios, the larger number, the 42, the 46 on either cassette, that is your climbing gear. So the bigger the number, the easier it is to pedal when going up a hill. This bike rolls on Kenda Havoc Plus tires, which I honestly don't know anything about. You don't see Kenda spec'd on a ton of bikes, so it's a little bit concerning to me, but I'm sure they work perfectly fine. The wheels on this bike are also tubeless compatible, and it has boost through axles front and rear. A couple negatives here, this bike does have a two degree steeper head angle than the Nuke Proof or the Ragley. It has a 67 degree head tube angle, so this bike isn't as aggressive as the others. 
There's nothing wrong with that, but if your goal is steep technical descents, you might be more comfortable on the slacker bikes. The rear disc rotor on this bike is also 160 millimeters, while the other two bikes we already discussed come with 180 millimeters front and rear. So you won't have as much stopping power on the rear brake of this bike, and that's kind of just nitpicking at this point. I'm also not really a big fan of this color scheme, but that's just personal preference. Moving right along, my number four pick is the Commensal Meta HTAM Origin. Coming in at $1,200, this bike is the most expensive on this list, and it's on here to showcase that more expensive doesn't necessarily mean more better. Don't get me wrong, this is a super cool bike, but some of the components on it aren't as well specced as its competitors. We'll talk about the good things first though. This bike does offer the most amount of travel with a 150mm fork, which is, again, a RockShox Recon. It's also the only bike to offer a 200mm disc brake rotor in the front, where all the other bikes offer 180mm. And I honestly think it's the coolest looking bike of the bunch. Look at these tan wall tires and tell me it doesn't look absolutely gorgeous. With the bigger travel and the bigger rotor up front, I can only assume this bike feels most comfortable going downhill. My biggest issues with this bike are the cassette and the brakes. It uses a SRAM X5 10-speed drivetrain, which I've personally used, and it's okay at best, but the cassette only has a range of 11 to 36. Now that is a big difference when you're climbing. With that cassette, that also suggests that this bike is more designed for downhill use. It also comes specced with Tektro hydraulic brakes instead of Shimano, like on all the other bikes. Not to say that Tektro is bad by any means, but for $1,200, it would be nice to see Shimano brakes on this. This particular model also does not offer a 29-inch version. There are more expensive models that are a 29-inch wheel, so if that's your preference, you will have to pay a little bit more for this bike. And just like the other bikes, it has tubeless compatible wheels and boost through axles front and rear. With this bike being the most expensive and having some of those features I'm not thrilled about, this bike would probably not be my first choice. Time for the cheapest bike on this list, and what I personally think is the best value here, the Vitus. Vitus, I'm pretty sure it's Vitus, I'm gonna say that for the remainder of this section, Sintir 27 or 29. Offered in both 27.5 and 29 inch versions, this aluminum hardtail packs a lot of value for $949. It has the same Shimano Dior 11 to 46 drivetrain as the Nuke Proof and Ragley, boost through axle spacing, modern geometry, and wide Schwalbe tires on tubeless compatible wheels. It just so happens to be the only bike on this list without a RockShox Recon fork. It uses an X-Fusion RC32 air fork with 130 millimeters of travel. That front travel is the same on both the 29 inch version and the 27.5. This bike has Tektro hydraulic disc brakes just like the Commensal, but they are a slightly higher model than what comes on the Commensal and this bike is $250 cheaper, and it also offers internal cable routing for a dropper post if you want to add one in the future. The head tube angle on this bike is between the steepest and the slackest of this list, so it's sitting at a 66 degree head tube angle for the 27.5, and slightly steeper for the 29 inch version at 66.5 degrees. While I can't comment on the quality of Vita's products or the X-Fusion fork, I have read a lot of positive reviews about these bikes, and at $949, I honestly think this is one of the best values. A couple honorable mentions that almost made this list are the 2021 Specialized Rock Hopper Expert 29 and the Marin San Quentin 1. I don't know if I pronounced any of that correctly. If you live in California, feel free to correct me. The Rock Hopper is $1,125, and it did not make the list due to having non-boost open dropouts and no 27.5 inch version available. Otherwise, the spec on this bike is very impressive for the price. It's also the only bike from this list that offers a 12-speed drivetrain with an SX Eagle. The San Quentin 
One is $900, so the cheapest bike on this list. And this one did not make the list because it has a nine speed drivetrain, uses an open dropout in the rear, and has a coil sprung fork instead of an air fork. Still, it's not a bad bike, but for 50 bucks more with the Vetus, you get the through axles front and rear, air suspension, and the 10 speed drivetrain. So what about one of the most popular beginner bikes, the Trek Marlin? While it isn't necessarily a bad bike, I think you can get more value out of the bikes we've already discussed. There are four different Marlin options, starting with the cheapest, it's the Marlin 4, then the 5, then the 6, and the most expensive, the Marlin 7 at $800. The reason I don't recommend these bikes is they all come with a front derailleur, coil fork, open dropouts, and steeper cross-country style geometry. Even the top model at $800 only offers a 9-speed cassette. These bikes are perfectly fine for light trail use and casual riding, but if you do want to progress further into the sport, it does not offer the upgrade potential that these other bikes do, and it'll actually cost you more in the long run. Let's say you decide to upgrade to a RockShox Recon like all the other bikes, and a 1x10 Dior drivetrain. I've priced it out here and it actually ends up costing you a total of $1,400 if you went with the Trek Marlin 7 starting at $800. That's just to get the parts alone, so if you aren't comfortable even installing those and you take it to a shop, you're looking at a few extra hundred dollars. It is definitely not worth it at that price. With the old school axle spacing and open dropouts, it limits your wheel upgrade choices and the wheels that come on this bike are not tubeless compatible. So if you think you'll really get into mountain biking and continue to grow with it, I recommend spending a little extra at the beginning to have a more modern bike that you can grow with. So there you have it. Those are five trail worthy bikes that you can buy for $1,200 or less. I've left links to all the websites below so you can check out the specs and geometry figures of each bike. As I already mentioned, there are a lot of options for under $1,200, but these are five bikes that I would actually spend my own money on if I were in the market for a budget-friendly hardtail. You can use these bikes as a starting point and seek out features and geometry that best suit your riding style. What do you guys think of this list? And what are some bikes you'd recommend for under $1,200? Let us all know down in the comments below in case there is a great bike that I missed that will actually help out another viewer. As always, don't forget to give a thumbs up to the video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you aren't already. Thank you so much for watching and until next week, stay rowdy within reason. It's so unbearably hot in here every time I record. I have these lights, one, one's here, one's back here. Oh boy, oh my, it is warm. Not important, we'll see you next time.